In this video, we're going to be learning about arrays. Now, we know variables can hold data of certain types, but it can only hold one piece of data at a time. Arrays can hold multiple individual pieces of data at one time in different indexes. And the indexes are like slots. So let me show you how to create it. We start off by creating a variable. And an array can be any of the four data types we use in Alice. I'm going to make a whole number array. Now, to actually make it an array, we got to click Is Array. And we have to give it a name, just like we would any other variable. So I'm going to call it Score. Scores. And then I'm going to go to Initializer. And this is going to be a little different. I'm going to go to Custom Array. So we can add values into each of the indexes. So I'm going to add the number 2 to the index 0, 3 to index 1, 1 to index 2, 0 to index 3. Now it's important to remember that arrays have an index, first index of 0. So an array of size 4 like this one, it's size 4 because it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 indexes, starts out at 0 and goes to 3. So okay, I've got all the data I want in there. I hit OK, and then I hit OK. Now, I can access this data or I can change the data. So for example, if I wanted to change the number in index 1, which is currently 3, I would go to Assign, I would select the array, and then I would select what index I want. And again, I want index 1, so I would go to 1, and then I would put what I want to put in index 1. So I'm going to say 99. So I hit OK, and now this is going to change what's in index 1 to the number 99. Let's add a character and see if that works. Okay, I'm going to have the camel say. We'll start with an empty string. Then we'll use the plus sign to concatenate that with the array. Now, since it's an array of whole numbers, it's going to be under whole numbers. I'm going to go to my array called scores. And I want it to output what is in index 1. And then since it changed index 1 to 99, it should output 99. And there we go. Let's try another index. So I'm going to say, say again, custom text string. And then I'm going to concatenate that with my array scores. And I want to do index 3. So it should output 0. I'm going to disable this. And now it puts 0. Now it's important to understand we can only access indexes that exist. So we have index 0, 1, 2, 3. If we try to access index 4, which doesn't exist, we're going to have a problem. So I'm going to have it output what's in index 4. We run it, and it crashes because it tells us that it's not in range. We call this an index out of bounds error. Is there is no index 4. We can also create a loop to go through each of those. So let's do a count loop. Now I want it to go through four times since, the in, since it's got four indexes. I could either type in the number 4 or I could say scores.length. So that way it'll count the length, which is 4, and it will loop through this four times. Then I'm going to create a variable. I'll start it out at 0, and we'll say index. We'll start it out at 0. And then I'm going to have the camel say, instead of saying a specific index, it's going to say whatever the contents of the index variable is. So the first time it'll go through an index is 0. Now I don't want it to always say number 2, because I want it to go through the whole thing. So after it says what's in index 0 of the scores array, I'm going to increment index up by 1. So I'm going to say assign index equals index plus 1. That way the first time it goes through, it'll tell me index 0. Then it'll increase the value of the index variable to 1. And then it'll tell me what's in index 1. And then it'll increase the value of the index variable to 2. Then it'll tell me what's in index 2. Then it'll increase the value of the index variable to 3. Then it'll tell me what's in index 3. Then it'll increase the value to, of the index variable to 4. 
which would cause a crash, but it's not going to loop through again because it's already been through four times. Let's run it. There we go. The camel's telling us what's in each index. So arrays can be very useful because we can store a lot of different data of the same type in one variable.